All right guys, it's an early Saturday morning and we have a DIY for you today. We are going to be doing this dresser and turning it into an entertainment center. These drawers are gonna go, there will be shelves in their place, and then we're also using this Bondo to fill in these lovely flower details. So stick with us and we'll show you how to take this from drop to fab. Okay, so I've taken out the drawer. We've got the runner in here. We're gonna unscrew this runner. And then Zeb is going to actually cut little boards to put in the bottom because this doesn't feel like it's sturdy enough to hold up components. But the sides are already in, so all we have to do is put a board in here, staple it in, and then it'll be ready to get painted. While Jamie's getting all the hardware off and those drawers out, I am going to mix up some Bondo here. I just got my scrap piece of wood to mix the Bondo up. And I've never really found a consistent measurement for the cream hardener so I'll show you how much I put in but I'm gonna mix up quite a bit because we've got quite a few things to fill up so I'm just gonna take you here and you want to do it in a well ventilated area because it's pretty stinky and definitely when you sand it you have to wear a mask because that powder gets all over the place we don't use it a lot because it is so stinky but for purposes like this where we're covering up this detail it's really the only way to get a nice smooth finish regular putty just won't work so i'm going to use the hardener uh, i'm just going to put a big glob of the hardener on there uh, that's probably enough you got you want to mix it really well it does dry pretty quick once the hardener's in there so you you have a limited amount of time you can work with it and if you don't get the hardener mixed in really well, it doesn't actually get hard. It, it like it won't cure it's up. It's all gummy. It just doesn't set up. Yeah. And Bondo can be used for anything that you want to. So if you decide you start using it and you like it, you can use it to fill holes if you're replacing hardware, to fix damage. It's really good to fix damage parts because it gets really hard. Like kind of like cement only a little bit more pliable like it's a really hard it's not durable. as brittle as cement. yeah it's not as brittle but i mean it's a hard durable and a sandable finish you can't stain it but you can paint over it if we're painting like table legs or something and i have some wood chunk out on a pine leg i'll use this to fill in the crack it works great okay so that's pretty well mixed in I'm just going to take a big glob of it here on the putty knife and work it into my crack that I want to fill. You want to leave it a little raised because when you sand that down smooth that'll, uh, that'll fill in all the way. And it dries quick. How long does it take to dry, Zeb? It says uh, about five to ten minutes in 70 to 80 degree weather if it's low humidity and about half an hour to 45 minutes if it's colder and has higher humidity. It will dry pretty in pretty cold temperatures because of the hardener. It just takes quite a, quite a bit more time. The Bondo's all dry. We're going to use our orbital sander with 80 grit sandpaper and sand it all smooth. Making sure to wear a respirator to keep that nasty dust out of my lungs. It's nice and smooth. You can see that it's all filled in. I'm going to do that to all of this and then I'll probably go over it lightly with the 220 just to smooth it out. I have exposed some of this natural wood so we're going to spray that area with shellac so it doesn't bleed through. I'm also going to lightly sand the entire piece because it's just a little bit shiny and I want to make sure that my primer and paint adhere to it really well. So I'm going to get that done and we'll show you where we're at. You're gonna cut out notches for that, or you're just gonna. All right, guys. So I'm doing fairy chalk mother uh, high bond primer on this first, and then I'll be finishing it up with snowflake.
I'm just going to staple and secure the front of this down so it doesn't move around. Because I can't get the gun in there, so I'm just going to staple this front edge. And we'll go back with some lightweight and fill that in and make that smooth. Remember when I said I needed to shellac those? I totally forgot. So do you see where all that bleed through is? That is where I didn't shellac it. And where you can see the outline of the flowers, not because it didn't get filled, but because the Bondo doesn't bleed. So I'm just gonna use my handy dandy shellac. Oh my goodness. Let's see if we can get this. There we go, bullseye shellac and a spray can. I'll spray it and that'll solve it. I'm pretty sure they need to start paying us for their promo, but I can't say enough about it. It's the only way to stop the bleed through. I'm going to glue on these uh, quarter inch strips of wood that are just off of the end of a 2x4. They're just the side strip that I ripped off and that's going to fill these gaps on the side of the shelves that we built. It's kind of hard to get a full width shelf in there without really flexing the board and almost snapping it. So I'm just going to put these on the edge to clean that up and cover that edge. So I finally got this all painted. It's ready for distress. I'm using my Orbital with 220. I'm taking paint off the edges, but I'm also smoothing out all the flat surface so it's nice and smooth and ready for polyacrylic. I've got the boards here that we're going to use to plank the top of that entertainment center. And I've just sanded them down, they're cedar, and I've just sanded them down with some 80 grit until you can still see the saw marks in there, but they're not all the way down smooth. And I'm just going to stain them with some Minwax Jacobian. Sometimes when you run out of horizontal workspaces, the table saw becomes the workbench. I've got a bunch of other stuff drawing on a few tables and the workbench, so I'm gonna do my gray wash over here. And this is just a real light, and I'm mixing it in with the same rag that I used to stain it, and it'll help it blend real well. So Deb's gonna staple this. We're using our air compressed staple gun and we're putting staples about every two feet all the way across. Just two staples, two staples, two staples. We don't fill them. You could if you wanted to, but we like to look. I just put a clamp on here because the board has a little bit of a warp. So I'm just gonna use that to force it tight while I, while I staple it down and that'll hold it straight. Nothing like filming and sealing as it gets dark. Okay, it's all complete. We've removed the drawers, we added shelves, we used the Bondo to get rid of the ugly flowers, and then we planked the top. I hope this inspires you to create something beautiful with the things that you have around your home or that you find when you're junking and thrifting. Be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com to get the paint that was used today. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.